The squeeze on the cost of living is more broad than that. And this morning, the Work and Pensions Select Committee held a hearing and giving evidence to that hearing was Jack Munro, who is a food poverty campaigner and activist. And I'm pleased to say you can join us now. Jack, thank you very much for coming in. Now, during that session this morning, you talked about some of the impact on this squeeze on living standards. You spoke about every pound spent on children's health now would save £220 down the line, so investing for some sort of return. Talk me through those figures. How do you come to that? Um, th yeah, that's a report that I came across a couple of years ago now when I was researching the impact of um, living in a cold or damp accommodation on long-term health conditions. And um, I need to dig out the report because the Select Committee were very interested in, in reading it. But it's basically the investment in early years education, free school meals, fruit, milk for kids and warm, safe, decent homes. Um, for every pound that's invested in those things, you, you gain back £220 in you know savings on, on on healthcare on justice on social support so it's you know i've spent a decade making the emotional argument why giving people enough food to eat and enough heating in their homes and safe decent accommodation is um is the right thing to do but there's a very strong economic argument for it as well and just talking about numbers again you said 4.1 million people in the uk are living in poverty i mean that's a big number yeah, and uh, and 4.5 million people in the UK are currently living in fuel poverty, um, and that number is set to rise to six and a half million people in April when the energy prices kick in, and it will rise further to eight and a half million people by October, um, and that's. You know, that's absolutely shocking. Before the pandemic, um, one of my fellow panellists today who was um, speaking on behalf of Energy Action said that 80 people a day were dying in the UK as a result of living in cold homes. And that was pre-pandemic, before all of, before Ukraine, before everything. So those figures are set to be an awful lot worse. I mean, Jack, we have got a minister here. <laughs> um, so as you're talking about the cost of living squeeze pre the war in Ukraine, what would you say now that you'd want to see done? I think that people who people are really struggling and really suffering at the moment, and a lot of people are, and that is only going to get worse. And we need a rapid intervention in order to lift those people out of poverty, out of cold homes, out of hunger, out of those difficult circumstances, because it's not something I say lightly. People are dying. People have died, and more people will die. And we've seen that the Chancellor can find a whole orchard of magic money trees for his pet projects, for things that he deems to be worthy, eat out to help out, writing off furlough fraud. And... It, you know, he needs to go and dig around in that orchard and find some money for people who don't have the same recourse, don't have the same voice, don't necessarily have sort of the same lobbying power, and that's children, disabled people, vulnerable people, elderly people, and um, act in their best interest as well. Paul? Some really interesting points there, Jack, and I'd be interested to see... I'll go back and look, look back at the evidence you gave this morning. It sounds, uh, sounds fascinating. Really important issue. I think the, some of the difference was something like the Eat Out to Help Act, for example. It's, it's a one-off hit, a good amount of money, as you say, rightly say. What we've got to find is those sustainable solutions so that we can be um, supporting children in exactly those kind of environments and families in those environments uh, over the months and, and, and years ahead. What we've done, because you talked about free school meals, I think one of the, the things that we did there, for example, is that we targeted very much, rather than just um, every child, uh, in, including uh, whose parents might be able to afford uh, to support their children through school meals, targeting it very much at the people that needed most intervention, the lowest paid and um, people with a possibly a wider domestic issue that you could look at. And we did that through the holiday, holiday um, activity programme where they, they could engage in sport, other activities. They could almost be triaged basically because you could, you could get a feeling of what, the, what wider support they might need whilst giving them a good meal. Jim, is that right, targeted interventions the way forward? That certainly wasn't my experience during the pandemic in Oldham where my time was spent giving out uh, sandwich packs to children who couldn't eat. It was spent on the Fair Share programme, giving out food to families that couldn't uh, afford to put food on the table. And let me tell you, the real life implications are it was nurses who were coming for those food parcels, it was social care workers who were coming for those food parcels. People are sinking in this, you know, they can't keep their head above water. And it was bad enough with the cost of living crisis on energy, on food, uh, on, on transport, on people's everyday domestic bills. But then the government come back with a double whammy of a national insurance increase, of council tax increase, uh, the personal tax allowance uh, changes is going to cost people even more. And then they take away the universal credit uplift. I mean, families are really struggling now. And when they look to the government, 
to say, what are you going to do to help? I'm afraid they're not just found wanting, they make it even worse. Paul, making well, it worse? No, I mean, I mean, the council tax increase is obviously up to, is, is up to, uh, is, is for councils to decide how they're managing their budgets. But in terms of the national insurance uh, changes, that's very much there, targeted to increase the, um, uh, the the spending in the NHS to come up with a, to tackle the backlog. That's and that's what I mean about looking at the public finances as a whole. Cost of living is a massive issue. Clearly, it's a massive issue that we need to tackle. We clearly need to keep people well as well. So we've got to pay, fully fund the NHS in the right way. That's what I mean about the but. The, the Chancellor flexing but looking at the public finances on a sustainable footing. Jack, you've been campaigning on this for a long time. Do you get the sense that the reception is now changing, that people are listening to what you're saying? Very slightly. <laughs> Very slightly, but there's still an awful lot of work to do. And I can't help but, you know, think that if people had listened when those of us who started to raise the issue started to raise the issue a decade ago, we certainly wouldn't be in the situation we're in now. I'm quite interested in Paul's comment about Eat Out to Help Out being a one-off cash payment because actually the um, policy groups that I was in with today in the Select Committee, the Resolution Foundation, Social Policy Fund um, Forum, they all advocated a one-off cash lump sum of around £500 um, in order to help lift people out of the cost of living crisis in a sort of in a mirror of what America did in the pandemic to give all of their citizens £500 to let them make the judgment calls and decisions themselves about how best to rescue their household budgets and how best to sort out the situations that they're in. But when people, people who are in the lowest income deciles, when you give them money, it goes back into their local economies. You give people who earn the top 0.1% of wages in the UK money, it disappears off to the Cayman Islands. So you, giving people a one-off lump sum payment in order to dig themselves out of whatever holes they're in isn't just something that us mad left-wingers are banging on about. It's what the government's own think tanks and policymakers are avidly recommending. Paul, your thoughts on that idea? Well, I mean, which is exactly what we did with the universal credit uplift. That's, what, that's why, during the pandemic, we had the uplift. It was an emergency situation which we but gave. It was We've also, because it was an emergency situation, but it was that specific hit that we needed to um, support people through. I think what, what is also a good driver of tackling poverty Yes, absolutely, cash is, um, is absolutely the heart of it. But there's wider interventions in other situations that, 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 are, that are worth um, examining and looking at in the round. But we've also, because I'm the minister that looks after the national living wage, and we've increased that by the highest cash um, uh, in cash terms ever. Um, and it's right that we actually make sure that we're not recovering our economy on the back of the lowest paid. So whilst we're looking at supporting businesses, what we're not going to do is allow them to, uh, to undercut pay. That's exactly the, what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. BP and Shell have made record profits, but they're not being asked to contribute more. It's households that have been asked to uh, contribute more. During the pandemic, there's parts of the, the economy that boomed Amazon. Uh, the online giants boomed because people were ordering shopping to be delivered at home. We're not taxing them. We're seeing our high streets go to the wall where the shutters are down and the windows are boarded up. You know, the government have got the priorities completely wrong on this. Well, I think with that, I mean, you've, if you look at BP and Shell, you look at the losses that they made the previous year, um, because actually some of the profits are um, accounting changes, but nonetheless, they, they are making big profits, but we want them to invest that in diversification away from fossil fuel. Uh, and what we don't want to do is also, as I say, if you had a windfall tax, get them to just shove up the bills anyway to try and get claw back some of that, some of that windfall tax, which in inevitably will happen in a free market. Jack? I'm sorry, Paul, but I really have to take issue with the fact that you said that the government are not going to recover the economy off the back of the lowest paid people because that has been conservative policy for the last 12 years. Austerity-led ideology has meant that people who have the least in this country have routinely been asked to shoulder the burdens of the bank bailouts and of all of the, all of the policies that the conservative government has consecutive Conservative governments have put in place to reduce welfare payments, to reduce the support that's available for the poorest and most vulnerable people in the lowest income households. The economy has been rebuilt. What little green shoots we have has been rebuilt on the bodies of the dead people who are no longer with us because they have been failed by the Department of Work well, and Pensions.